Okay. First and foremost, before I start, I'm really glad that you did not go after me now. Like my slides don't, are not well designed as you know, making animation color. But, uh, but let's let's just go into it and dive into the interest of time. All right. So who am I, really quickly? Uh, I'm currently the new business intelligence specialist at Mind Valley. I'm also uh, retaining the sysadmin role. Uh, the other two lines are mostly ex-banker talk. So if you understand it, you're probably a banker deep inside. <laughs> I'm also a co-organizer of Hack Weekend with the awesomeness of Hakim and you know, Pandemic crew and everyone else here, Tara, all included. And of course, I think data and analytics is hot, right? I mean, data is always hot and I, I, I love data, period, okay? So before I go on, a super quick plug, uh, because I can and I'm desperate. Um, <laughs> Alright, I really, really need a new sysadmin for my knowledge. And I, I can't emphasize this enough because right now I'm doing two roles and I'm getting hammered. Um, if uh, we are also looking for an intern, so if you want to be, you know, you want to just learn the technology, you know, you want to be trained in it. Uh, we will provide you a full scale of training. If you're coming in as an intern for the sysadmin role, I will be training you. If you're coming in as a developer role, you'll be learning under the god a lot of code, which is Calvin. Uh, all right, so please contact me. There's more information on the careers page, I think, under IT administrator for the sysadmin role. If you know anyone also, please recommend them. They don't have to be senior sysadmins, even if you're interested in it. I actually took up the job as a challenge. I told Prashant that if I can't do it within one month, fire me. All right, so fortunately I've not been there yet. Okay, so uh, quick plug, so just make sure you check out the page. All right, so why are you here? Super quick, um, you know, you're probably one of these three categories. You're, you know, you're in a business, you're looking for networking opportunities, you work somewhere, uh, etc. You're in, or you're an investor, and you know, you're just looking at what other people are doing, and you're looking for new ventures. Or there's also a fourth category always, which is, you know. <laughs> It always comes down to the users, right? It always comes down to, you know, when you're running a business, you're always going to deal with the users, and at the end of the day, they are what matters, right? How you convert them how into leads, how you convert them into customers after that. So, I mean, the, the, the typical funnel generally goes down like this, right? Users, general users of the web, right? And you work your magic, you work your SEO magic, you work your PPC, your CPC, your whatever magic, and you try to get them to your site, and you try to get them as a lead. Right, you get them to sign up for a free offer, you get them to download whatever. Or you know, even if you're from Facebook and you don't want to get them, you know, as a regular user who's looking at an ad, you know, or someone who's in a group and you just want them to get into this entire funnel. It's a very simple funnel, of course, but the, the default idea is this, right? And of course there are lots of things that contribute towards it. I mean, you know, I can name six and you can probably name like five hundred at this point, but uh, simple things like this actually contribute towards you converting into this funnel uh, at the end of the day, right? What differentiates the user and why a user would sign up to be a lead and why a user would actually decide to buy your product or use your service for that matter. But, you know, at the end of the day, the basic knowledge of whatever I've been speaking right now is basic knowledge. And the idea of this is it's not about this basic knowledge. It's about how you measure it, right? At the end of the day, if you don't have the accurate data to say, which one of these things, which one of my improvements are working, which one of my changes are working, uh, how do I actually increase the number of users that come in uh, to play, right? It, it makes no sense, right? So today I'll cover a super simple tool, uh, Google Analytics, but uh, be warned, it's just, it, this is not a one-on-one -on -one presentation. I'm not gonna tell you how to embed your code in. <laughs> All right, there's enough WordPress plugins for that. <laughs> All right, and uh, you know, it's, 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 it, I'm just not going to do that, right? 
<laughs> okay. Now, uh, what I will be covering though is two super quick things. I'm not going to dive too much into it, um, but I'm just going to cover two super simple things: uh, custom variables and also multi-channel attribution. Now, quick question uh, before I move on: How many people here actually use Google Analytics actively, like super, super actively? Wow. All right. Nice. <laughs> All right. Now, the next question is: How many of you have actually used either one of these? <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. No? All right, good. So that's a good audience. All right. Because if every one of you said yes, I'd have to step down right now. All right. So super quickly, we'll just go into uh, the colors and come up, right? I hope you can see that. But uh, custom variables and analytics. What is custom variables? What I want you to think about it is, I mean, there's lots of explanations on it, but think of it as just additional tagging on your pages to improve data gathering. Now, by default, when you embed analytics code, when you sign up for an analytics account, they'll give you a chunk of code and they're going to say dump it on your site, right? Now, when you do that, or in WordPress plugin, you're just going to put your UID and whatever, and you know, it propagates this default code around all your pages. By default, what it does is it tracks 140 different uh, types of variables. Now, whether you use all the data or not is you know, completely uh, dependent on you and how deep you are into analytics, but more often than not, most of us just use it to see the flow of traffic, we see how many people are in it, etc. And we don't really deep dive into Google Analytics. Now, what I'm going to show you here is part one of Analytics on Steroids, which is one of the things that power users in Google Analytics do. And this is one of the things that MindVolley is also playing around with. And it's kind of a cool technology, it's not very hard to implement, so I'm just going to try and explain it to you today. Now, uh, the default format of a custom variable is uh, this, what you see here. So it says set custom var, which is a variable. Uh, there's four here, I really hope you can see this, but it says index here, name, value, and OPT, or optional sort, or scope, all right? So I'll just go into the next slide so you can actually see what these are, all right? Now, index, what is index? Index is just a, a number you assign between the range of one to five, right? And you assign it as a slot for the variable. Now. In Google Analytics, when you're using custom variables, you're limited to the amount of slots you can use. Uh, why is this so? This is because Google uh, prefers you to actually track it uh, based on what you actually need to track and not overkill. We actually had a meeting with them today and they actually said the same thing. Right? The, the idea is you need to think very carefully about what you're tracking, not just you know, blurting out everything and you know, trying to track everything and you get an influx of data that you don't understand. Right? A lot of data is good, but you know, dirty data is not necessarily the best, all right? So you would assign a number range between one to five, and I'll show you a quick example shortly, all right? Name, this is an, ident an, an identifier for the variable, and it generally appears in your top level analytics report. What this means is when you click on the reports and you're looking at custom variables, you're gonna be able to see this name here. So this is what you would put as a category of what you're gonna be measuring, right? What additional thing you're gonna be measuring. And I'll give you some use cases right after this. I'm just going to explain this really quickly, and then you'll start seeing the light in the next slide. <laughs> um, value, what is this? This is a um, subcategory. So generally, let's say in your website, if you have an option to track whether you, uh, whether it's male or female who's actually clicking on a button, or male or female that's actually converting better or turning into a lead better, the gender would actually be your name, which is an identifier, right? And the value here, the second variable, is going to be either male or female, right? This is an example. So let's say someone were to click on the value, male, right? You would know better still that you know the conversion is working on that sense. So you actually have genders that visit your site, these are the male population, this is the female population of percentage. Alright? So generally you have two over values, obviously, right? More often than not male, female, whatever it may be, you know, so on and so forth. So you can imagine other opportunities, other aspects of tracking as well, that you can have more than one option. Alright? So Opscope, this is an optional variable. What this is, is actually used to actually define user engagement on your site. There's three ways you can actually visit it. Uh, track it at a visitor level, session level, or a page level. Now, what this means is when a user visits your site, if your site is an e-commerce site, a site that's actually, you know, you have to log in and like Amazon, whatever, right? You would generally be doing something on a session level, right? You want to figure out, you know, within that session, more often than not, what are the users doing on that page? So you, if you have something at the top bar where users are clicking or having multiple options, you will use it at a session level. Now, let's say you have a page, and in your page you have multiple options that you want to track with the user, multiple buttons, multiple choices. That would be a page level, 
right? Page level tracking here, and a visitor level tracking is just general, right? You, there's no no actual filtration or deep filtration of the scope. All right. So just to make a little bit more sense, I'm just going to give you a quick example. All right, this covers some more than Okay. Um, the example of this code, and this is what you would embed in a page when you're doing additional tracking, right? So you call this anything like you know event shopping, whatever it may be, right? The number one is obviously just your slot. It's the first slot of your tracking. All right, shopping. This is let's say you are again an e-commerce site. You have shopping. Now the second one is what I was saying, a subcategory, right? Item removal. So in your cart, your checkout cart, you want to know whether someone's adding uh, stuff from that cart, whether someone is removing stuff from their cart after they saw something, right? Whether someone is inclined to actually add something after there's a thirty percent offer at the site, whether someone actually added something after there was a you know a list suggestion of oh his favorite books like what Amazon does right you notice that even in your checkout page you also see like lists of other people what are they reading what are the top recommendations etc and so on and so forth. Now obviously again as I said number two number two is a session level that means that you as a logged in user they are tracking your entire activity all throughout that site. All right so. Okay, why I'm saying the possibilities are endless is of course you can also imagine lots of other things here. Like imagine you have a page that you offer a PDF download as part of your sign up. Right? This is obviously a lot of things that a lot of internet marketers do, a lot of websites do as part of a, an option to actually gain leads. Right? Now what you want to do or what you need to do is you need to find out what what form of sign up enables them to actually download more, right? You want to know whether Facebook is converting better. You want to know whether a Google account is converting better. You want to know whether your instant access button down there is converting better. What you would do is actually create separate events for each of those and embed them in your landing page, right? And figure out which one of those is actually converting better for you from analytics. Now, what happens when you start embedding this? And this is not on every page, mind you. These are on specific pages that you need additional tracking on. Analytics will start feeding additional data into itself and it starts realizing, hey, let's take a moment and start looking at this data and saying, how can I split this even further? So your analytics data doesn't just put in the traffic, it's going to take the source of the traffic, it's also going to tell you for this event, which is shopping, there are X amount of people who did item removal after seeing this, Y amount of people did item addition after seeing this, and you know, Z amount of people actually decided to purchase straight through without you know, actually going for any of the upsells. Right? So you want to think of it that way and actually tweak your pages to make it even more uh, user friendly, more, you know, to enable it to convert better, essentially. Alright, so that's a really quick view of custom variables. Feel free to Google it up and play around with it. It's actually a really power user tool. I don't want to go too much into it because it's not something that every person who just clicks on analytics actually uses. It's something that you need to think about very carefully with your business to see whether you know, um, how much you need to track data. A lot of people don't want to see this, but it makes no sense if you're having a website, you're having a service online, but you're not really tracking what actually converts better for you. So as a business, it's, it's crucial for you to, to imagine, you know, like another example would be even if you're in a hotel, right? If you're in a hotel and you're trying to convert customers into signing up on your website versus buying it from Travelocity or whatever other sites out there, right? How do you actually entice customers to convert from your website? Right? So that's the other things you need to think about very carefully. And custom variables is actually used by some really, really big clients out there uh, from Google also, which obviously we can't tell you who, but uh, it's, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you need an NDA for that. But, uh, but uh, suffice to say, what I'm saying is that even if you're in the travel business, if you're in the you know like marketing business, I mean, at the end of the day, as what Mihal says, you know, uh, the internet, Marketing and advertising does not equal SEO necessarily only, but it also equals your data, right? At the end of the day, as a business owner, you need to decide and you need to find out what converts best for you. Now, uh, multi-channel attribution. I'm going to cover this really quickly. I'm not going to go too much into it. I'm not going to put any code, but uh, feel free to Google it up later anyway. Now, what is Google Analytics? Uh, multi-channel attribution It's actually a new feature rolled out on Analytics very recently. This was the big hoo-ha during the recent Google Go Measure event, if you were there. All right. Um, what it essentially helps you do is it helps you track the lifetime story of your customer. What that means is that it cookies your customer in such a way that if you are a customer and let's say you visit, how do you basecamp. I know all of us hate it, but 
let's just use that example. All right. So you visit Basecamp and you visit it today, and you know you try the trial today. You actually go through some lessons. You find out how to tweak it, and then eventually, maybe after two months, three months, you know, after learning their lessons, looking at their offers, etc., you decide to actually buy an account. You decide to actually convert and you know become a customer of Basecamp instead of just trying it out and playing around with a free account, right? What multi-channel funnel, uh, multi-channel attribution actually helps you do is it actually shows you which flow, when the customer originally came, what is the source of traffic that actually led the customer to your site, right? And how long between that did the customer actually spend going back and forth, back and forth, before they actually converted. So you actually see the entire assist funnel before the, the last conversion page. Because more often than not, someone will generally think, Oh, this is the last conversion page. This was the page that actually, you know, helped me convert my customers. But at the end of the day, your customers are not someone who's just going to look at your site, look at it immediately, and say, "Yes, I'm going to buy them now." Not necessarily. Some people are what we call impulsive. They tend to buy that way. But more other people tend to do research. They tend to go around a little bit. They tend to look at your website, look at your company a little bit. So those are what we consider assisted funnels. Funnels are pages that actually lead some a customer into converting and actually becoming one finally, right? So multi-channel attribution actually shows you that entire path, and I'll show you how it looks like shortly. Um, but the one thing, the real quick thing that I need to mention is that if you use Google Analytics and you do not specify or you do not have any goal tracking or e-commerce tracking, and of course feel free to talk to me if you do have questions on that, but if you do not use goal tracking, you do not use e-commerce tracking, it is useless. The multi-channel funnel cannot help you if you do not have all of this set up. All right? Now, uh, super quickly, what it's able to show you, I'm just going to show super quickly, uh, sources of traffic. We have multiple sources of traffic, obviously. When I say traffic, how the user actually reaches your site. Right? There's obviously paid advertising, CPC, PPC, etc. Whatever, there's organic search. People actually you know, search for you on SEO, etc. This is the part that Mihal helps out. Right? Uh, social networks, obviously Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. Whatever it is. All right? Referrals. This is if you have affiliates. Right, people who are blasting for you, people who are sending you traffic. Right, like let's say you are, I don't know, Basecamp, and someone else who has a productivity blog might actually want to be an affiliate of Basecamp because they, if they're going to blog about productivity, they are eventually going to say, hey, you should try out Basecamp. Right, hypothetically, of course, Basecamp is less productive, so we <laughs> won't <laughs> Right, emails. Let's say you collect leads, you collect, uh, you know, people who you have in your database, in your list, and you blast it out. Now, uh, what this does is it also tracks sources from emails, it's sources from news feeds, etc., whatever, and also direct traffic. Direct traffic meaning people who actually hear it and actually type it in their browser, right? Like www.basecamphq.com. All right. So, multi-channel attribution actually shows you traffic that comes from all these different sources in the assisted funnel, and I'll show you how that looks like shortly. But what are you going to do? And when you set up your goal tracking, your e-commerce tracking, and also your variables, what are you going to be able to set up is what we call sample groupings within the multi-channel funnel, and you're going to group your searches, obviously by unpaid searches, paid searches, direct traffic, referral traffic, etc. So you're going to be able to create groupings like this based on your traffic, and this actually helps you fix other stuff, because as the data flows in, you're going to start realizing that these are keywords that I missed, these are keywords that are actually helping people come to my site, but you know, clearly I've not optimized on it, I don't have enough AdWords spend on it, etc, 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 right? So, this is actually how it looks like, and this is my last slide in the interval of time, but, right? This is actually how multi-channel looks like. So if you can see it from the back, uh, and I hope you do, what you're going to be able to see is how customers come from, say, display advertising, and eventually they click an ad on Google, and they eventually just type your browser. So between this time, right, what they've seen is they've actually clicked on two different ads throughout a period of time, and eventually, think about it, did their own research, probably searched a bunch of other blogs, Right, and eventually just typed your URL and became a customer. Right? What the next one is organic search, which is page search. Organic search, obviously, in SEO, they probably have looked at you before. They've seen your website rank before for let's say the word productivity. Hypothetically, Basecamp would rank for that. Right? <laughs> of course we disagree. <laughs> but uh, paid search obviously is AdWords, right? So you search for productivity, they probably have clicked your website before. And when they searched again for productivity, they probably saw the AdWords ad uh, popping up on Google, and they probably clicked that, and that's how they converted. So these are examples of social. You can see Facebook. So if you click through with this, you're going to find out which uh, sources of 
for sure obviously convert it. So I'm, you know, I didn't put all those slides in, but you can play around with it yourself. Uh, but suffice to say, uh, what, what this multi-channel attribution allows you to do is it allows you to also see what are the forms of traffic that you are not optimizing for. Right? What it also allows you to see is that is there pages that I'm doing, like is there pages on my blog or on my site that I have not optimized for the customer? Right? Can I make it better? Right? Because clearly people are looking at this blog post, people are looking at this page, people are looking, uh, searching through this keyword, and have I, as a business owner, done enough all right, to actually ensure that my service or my website or my product is actually featured accurately and the customer gets enough information when they go on that page. Right? Of course, there are other things that you can look at, like bounce rate, etc., and stuff like that. But what this allows you to do is actually see the hidden funnels that allow customers to come in and flow through your site. Right? And this is why it's important for you to, as a business owner and as a person who I would personally encourage to look at data and analytics as a, you know, like a lot of uh, more finesse, I would say, is look at this as, as a form of assistance for you. Like your own personal uh, you know, data assistant telling you, hey, you need to fix this page. Hey, you need to fix this page. Hey, you need to spend more here. Hey, you need to you know, reduce your spending here. So you are able to, as a business owner, know how you actually optimize your entire business and spend it, especially on the web. Right? So that is for me really quickly. I will see you in part two. So in the meantime, I'm contactable to all these three. Yes, I managed to get the names. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, feel free to talk to me about analytics if you need more. Uh, so yeah, that's it.